Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll look at a really simple shape you can use to play pentatonic solos all across the neck. I'm going to play the standard pentatonic shape and what I want you to do is just count how many notes there are. Hopefully you counted 12, but we all know pentatonic means five note scale, right? So why are we all using a 12 note shape? Now what if there was a more simple five note shape we could use instead? And what if that shape could be played all over the neck to help us build more fluid solos and break out of those boxes? Well, of course there is, and I'm about to show you. So step one, let's start really, really simple with just four notes. 5 and 7 on the D string and 5 and 7 on the G string. 5, 7, 5, 7. We're in the key of A minor and these notes are G, A, C and D. Notice that we're not starting on the root note of A and this is really useful because it gives us the option to approach that A from either above or below. This little shape is what we'll call the primary pentatonic box, and you can think of it as your home base for most rock and blues guitar. If I play a really simple solo with these notes, it could sound like this. So now we've got those four notes down for step two, it's time to add the fifth note to complete our pentatonic scale. You may have noticed towards the end of that solo I just played that I bent the fourth note. One, two, three, four. This D at the seventh fret of the G string, I bent that up a full step to give me the note E. And this E is the missing note that we need to complete our full pentatonic shape. Now instead of bending to it, I want to play it directly by sliding my finger like this. One, two, three, four, slide. One, two, three, four, slide. And you'll see shortly how this slide enables us to transfer this pattern all across the neck. So that completes our five note pentatonic shape. G, A, C, D, E. So now let's solo again with this five note shape. Okay, so now we can play the shape in one position. For step three, we need to start moving it around the neck. Let's start by going lower, and we can play the same notes in the same shape, starting here at the third fret of the low E. We play the primary pentatonic box here, G, A, C, D, and then slide to the E. One, two, three, four, five. And any riff we played on the D and G strings earlier, we can just play in the same way here on the E and A strings. But now here comes the really powerful bit. You can join up the shape in these two positions like this. Starting in the lower position, we get one, two, three, four, slide, and then straight into the next position. One, two, three, four, slide. So all together. Faster. And now you start to see how we're not only moving up the strings, but across the fingerboard, which gives us a lot of flexibility to play much more fluid solos across the neck. If you focus on where the two shapes meet, on the A and D strings, you'll see we've created another pentatonic box. So we have our primary pentatonic boxes here on the lower string position, one, two, three, four, and here on the middle string position, one, two, three, four, but you'll see when we join these two positions together using our slide, we actually create a whole new box as well. So you see here on the A and D strings, we get five, seven on the A and five, seven on the D. 
And we'll call this our secondary pentatonic box. Playing a lick in this secondary box allows you to join up licks in the primary boxes at different positions on the fretboard. For example, I can play this lick around the primary box on the lower two strings, and then slide into a lick in the secondary box here on the A and D strings, and then repeat that first lick again, but on the middle strings. So all in all we get, In a minor key, you can always give a little tiny bend to this note, the third note of the scale, for an extra bluesy feel. So let's hear that with the track. On to step four, and let's play that same pattern in a higher position. Now here's that exact same shape, but on the B and high E strings. And combined with the first position we learned earlier, it looks like this. So we have our two primary pentatonic boxes here, and now here, and the secondary pentatonic box here. One thing to note is this time, that secondary box, we need to move up a fret when we move from this string, the G string, onto the B string, just because of the way the guitar is tuned. So let's play a simple solo with these two positions. Finally, step five, and we need to combine all the positions we've looked at together, which looks something like this. Low position, middle position, high position. Now let me play one last solo using all three positions, and just watch how easily I can join up licks across the neck. enjoyed this tutorial and if you're looking to build your guitar playing even further then the next video to watch is this. <laughs>